Soul Leveling Episode 3 cements itself as worthy of all the hype it's received, and probably more. Because you could look at an episode like Episode 2, and there's people who just will dislike shows like these and say the only reason people are hyping it up is because look at the blood, look at the action, even if people like me are saying the whole reason Episode 2 was so good was because of the riddle and how they didn't just let a character brute force his way through and actually had to think and the way the writing kind of wrote that entire trial. That's what we really loved about it, everything else was bonus. So an episode like Episode 3 that comes in and yes, does have some action, but it's basically all about the exploration of the menu system, the becoming a player, how apparently only our MC sees any of this and potentially might be the only person in the world who has anything like it. We have no idea. An episode like this comes in, lets us explore the world first and foremost, and what it's going to do to a character who, as they say, like an E rank in this world for their hunters, probably would read on the meter like a 70 or something. This man, even after what they thought was going to be his second awakening, still is reading at 10. So the whole idea that the solo leveler, he's going to go probably through multiple dungeons, level up, but it's not just going to be about watching the cool fights. Those are going to be amazing and those are going to be exciting. A1 Pictures is clearly animating these things with a lot of polish. The thing that's going to keep us there is legitimately enjoying an MC who doesn't just say, ooh, now I'm a player in my own reality, so I get to just power my way through. Eventually he's going to have confidence and eventually he's not going to be as afraid, but it makes sense that someone who's lost an arm and a leg recently, even if it's come back, who's been stabbed by goblins, is going to have a bit of trauma and PTSD going up against things, especially by himself where he can no longer run away. This show is worthy of the hype, and it's probably going to be worthy of so much more as each episode releases. I have a full live reaction to today's wonderful solo leveling episode available on my Patreon, so if you would like to see my full link of thoughts, they're over there if you're interested. Now this was, in my opinion, an even more entertaining episode than last week. I think the majority will probably say last week was more exciting because it was more brutal and intense, but for me, this is exactly what I was looking for. They didn't even need to give me any action this week, and I would have been completely satisfied with how they were handling the development of our MC, waking up, basically having no idea what's happened, and now he has daily quest logs. The daily quests are so interesting to me, because what's really fascinating about, I think, the penalty side of it, daily, right now, it's like training, right? Because he's weak as hell, he needs to build up his stamina, his muscles, and everything like that. What is it, like 100 push-ups? run this much distance, do 100 pull-ups, this and that. It's not really the craziest thing ever, but I mean, it makes sense that you're like, I literally just came out of a dungeon from Death's doorstep, I'm gonna go take a nap. The fact that the punishments probably are related to whatever the quest is. Right now, it's just daily strength training. So when he fails to do it, a miniature earthquake occurs, and he's thrown into this sandy desert location with poisonous centipede-like beasts that for four hours he has to sprint because you can't skip leg day, bro. You tried to do it, so they're gonna force you or you will die. And I think had he actually killed in that kind of like sandy location, it wasn't just a dream, he probably would have stayed dead and those nurses would have found a severed body and wondering what the hell just happened. The fact that he accepted being a player, he was on death's doorstep, so now he has these missions. But I think the idea of the missions and the quests are going to be really interesting because they're time-based, right? The daily ones, of course, have a 24-hour limit. There might be weekly ones that will take seven days. Maybe there will be quests that are three days long or three days and three hours long. We have no idea. There's a lot of flexibility with the timeline, but we have to consider the fact that these quests have to be completed, else you get a penalty. Right now, the penalty is run from a giant centipede for four hours. Eventually, it could be complete this quest or die. Complete this quest or suffer a loss. And what does that loss mean? A death of a loved one? Who the hell knows? So what happens when his real life is kind of overlapping with these quests? I don't know. Like, I'm thinking of a situation like in the first Spider-Man movie where Green Goblin says, hey, choose the passengers or choose Mary Jane. Pick one. Because eventually, there's going to come situations where... He has to complete a quest without a major penalty, and at that point he probably realizes the type of penalties he might get, or, you know, ruin relationships, if not, maybe not be able to save someone. It, you know, those are the types of questions that, that an episode like this brings me, and that's what makes these types of, of episodes so captivating for me. Because rather than just starting the show off saying, oh, you know, he gets his power up and he's about to become the glass cannon Bill, because that's clearly what he's building into, or at least that's how it feels to me. The MC in Soul Leveling basically is putting all of his stats in this new video game menu that he now has, that apparently only he can see, into strength. And I think right now he's at like 31 strength, give or take. And very clearly, he's a lot more talented. He doesn't have technique right now. That's all going to come in time with practice and all the training that he's going to do. 
But I love the idea that he's very clearly at some point going to have like 999 strength. Like, I feel like that's what he's going to do. And as long as he gets his technique down, I mean, he's dodging all right right now. He eventually is going to be a one man army. And it's going to be very fun to see because this is the type of character you want to follow in a power fantasy because you actually want to root for him. And he actually seems like a likable dude. This is just such a good show. It's beautifully produced right away when the video game menus were all in front of him, like his HUD. I love the little kind of like the glow effects and how it kind of moves around. It's not just the static menu in front of him. The when he opens up the gate, how it like electrifies or how it then turns to almost like a barrier, which really cool. He's basically in like a reality within a reality. All the general civilians still walking through can't see him, can't see this barrier. But of course, he can't pass through. He kills three goblins, and he doesn't just do what I thought he was going to do, which was pretty much immediately one-shot them. He was struggling, because obviously his first mission that he went on, we get the confirmation, his entire reason, which we knew he was like a hunter for his mom's sake, but they can't afford the treatment for their mother unless they have a lot of money. So going on these missions that, you know, he's getting stabbed in the chest, he's feeling fearful, because what guy wouldn't be fearful of these monster-looking beasts, especially when he isn't the strongest person in this world. He's struggling, he's fearful, but he has a decent dodge going on, and once he starts slicing and dicing, he does rather well before the... <sighs> it has a jaw of steel, man. Like, that thing's gonna hurt. I'm just, I'm basically cheering. I'm like, give that boy an uppercut and then punch downwards on his skull and crack the skull. Because his blade broke, right? So he's gonna have to think on his feet. Maybe he'll just pick up one of the goblin's weapons. I don't know. But he has to defeat a floor boss, right? He either has to fight a floor boss, or I think the other condition was find like a teleporter in order to get out of that. He's probably gonna fight the boss, man. Like that's what we're gonna be building him to. It's probably gonna be like a hobgoblin or something, maybe. I don't know. That's kind of my vibe that I'm getting. But either way, it's gonna be very interesting. The only thing I guess is a little weird is that I thought they were gonna bring up the fact that he lost a leg and an arm. And yes, a lot of the characters didn't realize that. But you know, the girl who's suffering PTSD, not wanting to go on missions anymore, she literally is seeing him train. Like maybe it's just in this world, there's some good prosthetics and that's what she thought happened. But I really was expecting her to be like, wait a second, didn't he lose his limbs? Cause she literally saw that. So maybe that's a conversation for another day. But either way, this is the episode I needed to see because I wasn't expecting all the answers. I just wanted to learn more about what will happen now that he's this quote unquote player and they have me really eager for more. Of course, popular series aren't gonna be for the every single person out there, but I think anyone who's claiming that you just watch solo leveling for the crazy action is kidding themselves because from episode one now to episode three, the things that I've continued to rave about the most is the writing. The writing is the thing that actually makes me most interested. The action is just an added bonus. Let me know what you thought of episode three of Soul Leveling down below though. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload more. And like I mentioned, we had that full live reaction over on my Patreon. And hey, while you're over there, you also get a video shout out. So today we have Alice Sosiev, Zuda, Count Viscount, and Philos. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.